Thanks, Ned. I'm really excited to show you more about Code Spaces and how revolutionary I think it is. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a mom of two young kids, which basically means I have no time. And in addition to being a mom, I'm an engineering director. I like to play around with new technologies, jump into side projects or open source, and make changes and commits on the go. Code Spaces gives me the power and ability to tinker and add value to my team, no matter how much time I have. So here I have a super simple app to help me manage everything going on right now called Preschool Call Tracker. Now, if I wanted someone to contribute to this app, first they'd have to clone the repo, then they'd have to follow the readme. Now, this one is pretty sim simple, but most of us have experience with really complex ones that have a ton of different instructions, steps, uh, installations, and a high likelihood of me losing hours of time troubleshooting some obscure setup error. This was a problem that we wanted to fix. On our main repository page, you'll see a brand new code menu. Clicking on that menu includes some options you're already familiar with, like cloning a repo and opening in GitHub Desktop. We also have a new option to open with an editor, and in the future, you'll be able to open the repo using any code editor, so it will be compatible with your preferred desktop IDE. In addition to opening a repo with these options, I'm delighted to introduce you to a new, faster choice, a way to develop in the cloud. Let's open with Codespaces. So this takes a few seconds to spin up. I already have a Codespace ready to go. What you're looking at is VS Code, the editor itself, running in my browser in a VM with two cores and four gigabytes of RAM, completely set up with all of my dependencies running, automatically logged into my GitHub account with even my personal .files installed. Everything works. Everything is ready to go. So wait, like the entire real editor? Yeah, the real, real editor. Let me show you real quick. I can open a file, type. I have uh, VS uh, IntelliSense and IntelliCode, which stars the most appropriate suggestions. I've got full colorization. I've got Minimap. Um, since any VS Code extension works, I have ESLint and can click on the bottom here to see any warnings or issues in my code. I can even put a breakpoint in here to debug. All I had to do to set up this dev environment was click one button and it was completely tailored to this project. So how do we enable all of this? Well, by default, Codespaces builds a container using an out of the box image that already has most of what you need. But I can also create additional specifications using a new standard, a dev container directory that can define additional container requirements like extensions to install, since remember, you can run any extension, a port to forward to, and a variety of additional options that are specific to this project. And if I wanted or needed to further tailor my setup, I could create a Docker file in my repo that dictates a custom image that would be used to create this container that I'm developing in without having to go through all of those painful readme steps. Let's start the server because there's more to explore there. We'll open up a terminal, which is something we can do because we're uh, in a VM. And for those of you following closely, you'll see that my bash prompt looks custom. And that's because it is. Remember, in addition to all of your VS Code extensions coming with you and any additional configuration you've written into the dev container, your personal dot files are also automatically available because they're being cloned from your personal dot files repo. My .files repo contains all of my personal customizations for Bash, Git, Tmux, and more. If a .files repo exists in your GitHub account, Codespaces makes an immediate connection and copies them into your Codespace. This even includes shell aliases and any other customizations that make your developer flow yours. So it always feels like home. We started our server in the terminal, and you'll notice that I can hover over this link and click through to a new URL. 
but the link is to a local host and we're not on my laptop, we're in the cloud. What's happening is that we've specified in the dev container that we want to run this app on port 3000 and forwarded that port on from your cloud hosted machine securely to you so you can see your app running live just like you would locally. Let's make sure this thing is really working. So I have a meeting title in here right now and I don't need the meeting title. I just need to know when it is, not what it is. We'll come back into the code and delete this meeting title. Now that it's deleted, we have this unused param being passed in here. And to see the full power of VS Code, we see that IntelliSense has dimmed the param and hovering over it gives me the ability to click quick fix and clean up our code. We can go back to our app, refresh, and see that there's no more meeting title. Okay, so I really like this change. Let's commit and push from here. I'll use the Git extension. Right now we're on master, which you can see at the bottom, but you can also spin up a code space from a branch as well and push directly to that branch. So we'll create a new branch called meetings, stage, we'll do a quick commit message and commit and push. Okay, so to recap, in just the last few minutes, we've cloned a repository, set up an entire cloud environment that functions exactly like our local one would, spun up a server, made a code change, committed, and pushed that change to a new branch. Now we can go back to our repo page and see that that branch and commit are showing up right here. Code spaces allows me to maximize the time I have available. I mean, if I can get all of this done within a couple of minutes, imagine what I could do during a kid's nap time, even if it was a short one. Whenever you want to get started and wherever you're starting from, now you can just click code. Thanks, everyone. Back to you, Nat.